Hey, how's it going? GetRepeat.io has this really slick loader animation with lots of nice staggered text effects that are swinging up and in. So I wanted to have a look at how to make this loading animation with GSAP. GetRepeat.io has been featured uh, as a nominee on site of the year on awards. So I thought it was a good candidate and I'm noticing a lot of these sites also have loader animations. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of them myself because it just takes you longer to get to the content you want, but it seems like if you want to really dazzle your users, then loading animations are something good to look into. This is gonna be a little bit more of an intermediate build with GSAP. We're just gonna use one timeline, so nothing too out of the ordinary, but I am gonna show you how to use GSAP's register effect function to make your code more reusable. First, we'll start by exploring the animation on a screen recording. Then we'll look at the Webflow project and how I structured the HTML and CSS. And finally, we'll dive into the code of how it all works. All right, let's get started. Hey there, Web Bay. Okay, so the animation starts with this sort of line color and all we get is the repeat logo that's fixed on the screen. As we come in, we get this sort of what I'm calling a swing up effect and then also a chunk up effect where once the swing up is done, we're chunking up the whole wrapper around these text elements um, each time. While that's going on, it looks like once the second text is done, we start staggering in these little icons up here at the top right. And then there's a pause and then boom, we bring this big uh, main container up and you can see we're animating the border radius here. What else are we animating? We're animating text that's coming up and this is all staggering. So this is staggering first and then this is staggering, and then this is staggering. So we're not only staggering within the row, but also uh, within the column, I guess I would say. So first row starts, second row starts, third row starts, and then they're staggering each element within that line as well. Uh, I'm not gonna cover any of the hover animations that are going on or the, th or the background, which is done with 3JS. That's as far as we're going to get in this example. So let's look at what I have built. And there you have it. All right, here in Webflow, let's start off with loader logo. All this is is a fixed div uh, that's stretching to the bounds of the viewport. And I set a Z index of 10 so that this sits on top of everything else. This is so that when the, when the main container comes up, the logo persists on top of both the loader and the main container. Looking at the loader, we see that we actually can't see it, um, but its Z index is set to one. If I set this to three, then now we can work on this. Um, and it's set to absolute because we don't want this to actually take up any height within the document. Once the main container comes on, we want that to be essentially like, you know, coming to the main page of a website. This loader is just supposed to splash and then go away and we forget about it. Okay, so looking at loader, the overflow is set to hidden. This is so that when we stagger in the text elements from below, they're not causing any document reflow or making some scroll behavior possible. We're also going to set no scroll on the body element itself by setting overflow hidden on the body, but I will show you that in just a second because that's in the page settings. We're also setting the position to absolute and having it cover the whole screen. And like I said, the Z index will be set to one when we're done, I'm setting the color uh, on the background here. But before we set that in Z index back, we have our title text wrap. This is just a div that wraps three title text elements. Uh, these are all lines. So the wrap itself is position absolute. This is so I can position it in the bottom left here. You can see selected bottom left and then 2% padding on the left and the bottom just to make sure that there's some space between that and the margin of our window. And then we've got title text. So this is just text that's set with viewport widths so that it scales as we resize the browser. And then I'm setting the transform origin on this to the top left. When we write our swing effect, we want it to swing from the top left kind of corner. Uh, by default, the transform origin is going to be set in the middle, and we want it to swing from over there um, so that it has that kind of swing up action to it. All right, collapsing that, now we have our icons wrap. This is up over here. Webflow is being a little bit funny. If I refresh, now we can see these are in the right spot. So it's just in designer when I preview and publish, it looks fine too, but sometimes in designer, these are popping over to the right there. Anyways, icon wrap, very similar to the wrap that we had around our text. Um, it's a absolutely position div with 2% to the top and to the right. And then I'm just flex. Uh, these are set to flex within there uh, for each SVG icon. This is just some SVG code here. Uh, nothing in particular. I set the width and the height to 100% and then I just set it on the embed element itself with the class of icon to 3VW for this one. And I think I have some, yeah, some combo classes for the ones that are a little bit wider or different. 
All right, so that is the icons. So we're done looking at the loader. Let's go ahead and set Z index back to one so that when the main container comes up, it's then on top of that uh, loader screen. And now we'll have a look at main. So main has two sections in it, hero and then an end. I just always like to put something at the end so you have something to scroll past, uh, make sure that our animation works and works for multiple sections on the page. Okay, so looking at section hero, this is just flex with align top and middle, which makes it so that our top nav stays in the middle there. You can see if we adjust that, it stays there. We have position relative so that our absolutely positioned items like this headline text wrap stays is relative to this section itself. Looking at top wrap, nothing too much to see here. The thing we're gonna animate though is this headline text wrap, very similar to the one we had in the loader animation, absolute position, 2% on the left, 2% on the bottom. And then we'll look at each headline row. So we are definitely going to animate these. And these have an overflow of hidden so that when the text elements come up, they get hidden and you can't see them. And then in there, we will have three headline text. So these are all individually. Um, I'm not gonna use like a text split library or anything on this because we have this little uh, image element in here. So this just, there's, there's not very much text. So this was, pretty simple to do to be. Uh, and then in here, we're setting the transform to the, the transform origin to the top left as well. And so we've got these headline rows. This one has the image in it uh, and then two text elements. And then we've got one at the end with one headline text element in there. Looking at this HTML embed I have on the page, I have pointer events none set on loader logo. This is so that I can actually select the elements under that if, you know, we have loader logo is fixed on top of everything. If we don't have pointer events none, then we wouldn't be able to select or click anything on the page. So that is why we have that there. And then what else do we have? This is just selection to make it look kind of fancy and pretty. And then GS Dev Tools is I'm using I'm importing GS Dev Tools from GSAP uh, to scrub through the animation. I'll show you that at the end of the video. And I'm setting the Z index to 99 on that so that it sits on top of everything else. In the page settings, I'm importing the script running on the localhost, which is my machine. I'm using Visual Studio Code in this demo, uh, not Code Sandbox like you might be used to for me, but we're still just writing JavaScript today. Uh, didn't do any TypeScript here. So on body, on the body element, I'm setting overflow to hidden. This is to prevent scroll during the loader animation. We don't want the user to be able to scroll past the loader. Uh, so this is important in making sure that that happens. But then once the animation is complete, we will set overflow back to auto. And then we want to prevent flash of unstyled content. This is like everything appearing before your JavaScript actually runs. So on title text, icon, and main, which are all the items that we're going to animate, we set our visibility to hidden, and I will show you how we treat that in the code to make things all better. So canceling out of that, that's everything within the Webflow project that we need to understand. All right, here we are in the code. We can see that I used npm install to install GSAP. I'm a Greensock Club member, so I get access to this GS Dev Tools utility. You do not need this to make the project, but I just wanted to show you what it is because I think it's really handy as you're fine tuning your animations. We're gonna call register plugin to make sure that we register that and we can use it. And then we're gonna listen for the load event, which just means everything on the page is loaded. So we're ready to run our GSAP animation. And I'm gonna call in init, which is a function that we defined down here. Within init, we're gonna start by getting references to the elements that we want to animate. The first things we're going to animate are anything with the class of title text. And so we're gonna use query selector all on that and store those in a variable called title texts. We're also going to grab the parent of title text. So this is gonna be the wrapper. So we'll just call title text of zero. That'll be the first element and get the parent node on that. And we'll store that in title wrap variable. Next, we also want to animate everything with a class of headline row, uh, and we're going to animate everything within that row as well. So you'll see how we do that once I start writing out the actual GSAP code, and that is stored in a variable called headline rows. Moving on, we want to declare a timeline within GSAP. So all we have to do for that is gsap.timeline. Timeline is a function that takes uh, an optional object, and within this object, we're going to pass a parameter of onComplete, which is going to get a value of a function. So you'll see we have just an empty function here. That function, we want to run when the animation is complete, allow scroll when the animation completes. So to do that, we're going to say gsap.set, and we're going to get the body element, and we're going to set overflow to auto. Remember when I said, in the when I showed in the page settings, we set overflow to hidden? Now when the animation is done, we want to set it to auto so that the user can scroll through the rest of our section and see all the features of our product and all that good stuff. 
Now, we also want to deal with the flash of unstyled content, and the main one to deal with is the flash of the main container on load. This is also works in tandem with the settings that we set in the style tag in the page settings code. And so we're going to use gsap.set again, and we're going to get the class of main, and we're going to pass an object where visibility is visible. So right before we run all our code, we're going to set the visibility of that item to visible. Next we will grab our timeline variable, which is the one we defined up here. GSAP knows it's a timeline, and I'm gonna walk through step-by-step step of everything that we're doing on this timeline. The very first thing we wanna do is we wanna swing up that restock text. So I'm gonna define this swing up really uh, effect in GSAP, and I'm gonna pass it the first item within our title text's node list. And now swing up is not something that GSAP has, so I need to tell GSAP this is what I want swing up to do. And I can do that using gsap.register effect. Register effect takes an object and that gets a few parameters. We get to give a name to our effect and I'm gonna call it swing up. So I've defined this custom myself. It gets a parameter of effect and this gets a function. And this function we wanna have, uh, well this function gets parameters of targets and a config from gsap. And within that function, we wanna return a gsap animation. So we can just get grab our familiar gsap.from and we're gonna pass the targets into that from animation and we're also going to specify an object where we will tell it which properties we wanna animate. The properties we wanna animate are the duration and the duration will grab from this config object that's optional to pass. We will also animate from an auto alpha property of zero. This is to prevent flash of unstyled content on the title text elements. And what this auto alpha does is it just changes the visibility visible when opacity is greater than zero. So as soon as this thing starts animating its opacity up, then it's going to become visible and prevent flashing unstyled content on initial load. We're also going to animate from a Y percent of 100% and a rotate Z of 15. That's in degrees. And lastly, we're gonna add a stagger property here of 0.2. For the first title text elements, this doesn't matter, but this is gonna come into play once the main container comes up and we animate within the row each, each line of, or each word within that line of text. Lastly, we're gonna define the normal ease as power3.out. And we can also specify some defaults. So we did say that duration can, we can pass in our own duration with this config object, but if we don't get one of those, we wanna specify a default duration. And for this one, we're gonna be 0.5 seconds. Lastly, we're gonna say extend timeline true, and this is what allows us to have that really nice timeline syntax where I just write dot swing up. So really cool and can make your timelines really succinct. Okay, so now that we've defined our swing up and we've done it to this text restock, we're gonna now chunk up the whole wrapper by 33%. To do that, we're gonna use a from to animation. We're gonna call it on title wrap, and we're gonna animate from Y% percent of 66 to Y% percent of 33. So this is now gonna show the second line of text and we'll make that duration 0.5 seconds. Now we wanna swing up that reorder text. We're gonna use our swing up effect again for that. Uh, and for that, to access that, we'll need to call title texts of one. So this is the second item within that title text node list. And this syntax right here is specifying where in the timeline we want it to happen. And we want it to happen in sync with our chunk up animation, which is this one here, I'm calling it chunk up but 0.1 second after that. So we're gonna start chunking up and as soon as we start chunking up, 0.1 seconds after that, we're gonna run our swing up animation. Now we're gonna call dot from and we wanna start animating our icons at this point once reorder is swinging up. So we're gonna call dot from and pass target of class icon and we'll give it an option with all the parameters that we wanna animate. We wanna animate each icon at X percent of negative 100%, auto alpha from zero, again, preventing flash of unstyled content stagger from the end. This means that it's gonna start with the item on the right rather than the item on the left, and it's gonna do 0.2 seconds for each one. And this whole thing is, this whole from animation is gonna start in sync with when this swing up animation happens plus 0.1 seconds. Lastly, we're gonna move title wrap up to its zero position. So we'll call it dot two on that. This is kind of like very similar to this from two animation we have here, but we want this to finally end up in its resting position where we defined it in Webflow. So we call title wrap as the target to that. And then we have our GSAP object of properties we want to animate, Y percent to zero and duration is one second. This one takes a little bit longer than the earlier one. I just kind of noticed that as I was scrubbing through the, um, scrubbing through the animation myself. And then 
it starts relative to when these icons start going, but it starts 0.5 seconds after those. All right, lastly, we wanna swing up the last line of text in this loading div. So we call swing up on title text of two, pass an object with duration property set to one, and using our relative start times here, just like I explained earlier. Okay, now we finish the loading screen and we wanna bring that main container up on top of everything. We also are going to animate the border radius there. So I can call dot from, pass the class of main, and also give it an object. And here we'll specify the properties we wanna animate. So Y% percent from 100, border radius from eight viewport widths. It's gonna to go to no viewport widths, basically zero and having no border radius, a duration of 0.8 seconds, and a delay of 0.8 seconds. There's a little bit of delay between the loader actually plays and when the main container uh, comes up on its own. Now we're gonna use our swing up effect again to swing up text in each headline with a stagger. So we're gonna call headline rows of zero. We're gonna get all the child nodes in there. So this is gonna be each individual text. If I go back to Webflow and we start, we look at, this is the headline row and this one has three children. So it's gonna have child nodes of headline text, headline text and headline text. The row, the second row is gonna have this image, this text and this text, and the last row just has one text in it. Back in our code, now we understand why we're accessing this child nodes object, and we're gonna call swing up. And we want this to start 0.2 seconds before the end of when the main container comes up. Looking at the QuickTime screen recording, we can see that, okay, our main container is coming up, coming up, and then it's not all the way up, and our text is starting to animate here. And then, very similarly, we're just going to call swing up on the next row, all of its child nodes. And we want this one to actually start 0.1 second after this one starts. And lastly, same thing, but with the last row, we want it to start 0.1 second after this one starts. So everything's relative, which makes our code really easy to adjust. If we just say we just want to animate one thing or say we want to adjust one thing up here, we don't have to change all the stuff down here. Now, lastly, we can add GS DevTools to the project. I'll show you that in one sec. So if we save and come back to our rebuild and refresh, everything is animating in all silky smooth like. Something that really helped me get the timings down with this project was GSAP DevTools. So if I just uncomment this line of code, you'll see I get access to this really cool um, timeline down here and lets me scrub all the way through our timeline. I can pause it. I can play it and I can start scrubbing and see, okay, you know, is are things animating in when I want them to animate? Uh, just recommend if you are a Greensock Club member to get this and use it in your projects and wanted to show it to you. Thank you so much for watching. Whether you like loading animations or not, I hope this helped increase your GSAP skills and give you some ideas for some fun future projects. There's so much great stuff on the awards side of the year website that I'm uh, keen to see how it's built. So stay tuned for more content like that. If this video helped you, please be sure to subscribe uh, and check out everything in the description below for all the other stuff that I offer. All right, talk to you in the next one.